Well, the first time previously the first time on Moe's Rants. Well, it's the first time we see Diamond also. And Diamond is in there. I don't know how to say this because, you know, I, I get kind of shy when I talk about stuff like this. He was getting some cheeks. I'm just going to be real with y'all. I don't know how to sugarcoat it. He was getting some cheeks. He was knocking something down. Now, I didn't think Diamond had it in him. Paul, I said, Diamond ain't getting none. After Adrian broke up with him, Tyrone Reeves is on his ass. He ain't going to be getting nothing. Sure enough, episode two. Episode two. I said, what the hell going on here? Diamond, like, hey, yo, 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 hey, yo, Tommy, I ain't, I ain't signing up for this. He said, Tommy, back up. Back up, Tommy. Tommy seen this and continued to walk down the stairs. He said, oh, my bad. I didn't mean to interrupt. And this nigga kept talking. Like, hey, if you didn't mean to interrupt, then go back up the stairs, bro. Lock that door. Oh, don't worry about Tommy. He different. He from New York City. Yeah, you know, them New Yorkers, they think they're entitled to everything. <laughs> He's kicked in. So are we going to uh, continue with this previous engagement or are we done? You're going to go ahead and leave. Because I can assure you he won't come back down here. I didn't even know he was coming down here the first time. I, I was caught off guard just like you were. I, I was like, whoa, whoa, Tommy, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I've been to jail, but I ain't, I ain't with all that shit. You know what I mean? So Diamond down here knocking it down. I'm just telling y'all what I see. Diamond down here knocking it down. Old girl got to leave. He didn't even get no, call me. Call him. Nope. Tommy came down here just to run in his mouth. We don't know what she knows, who she knows, where she from. This nigga came down the stairs and said, hey, that Chewy situation, I handled it. The Chewy situation. The, 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 what Chewy situation is Tommy talking about? What situation is he talking about with Chewy, y'all? Because he came down the stairs and Diamond was doing what Diamond was doing. He put his girl into the DDP, you know what I'm saying? Diamond Dallas Page. What did Tommy, what was he saying? He said he handled the Chewy situation. What the fuck, Chewy? Chewy, wait, he's CBI, ain't he? Because Chewy, hold on, Chewy was a CBI. He got the bricks. Mm. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Y'all telling me Tommy killed Chewy? He got rid of Chewy? He killed Chewy at the end of episode one. Wait, Tommy killed Chewy? I thought Chewy was a CBI. He switched sides with treason? Elder says self defense. Well, we're not. Oh, oh, all right. I got it. I got it. My bad. My bad. Gonna, gonna, gonna. I'm gonna tell. To everyone that told me that Tommy, that Tommy killed Chewy, that was a police officer that was in the room. What are we doing? Y'all sound like this guy. Y'all sound like this guy. Come on, y'all. Y'all know we don't do no talking. This is Diamond Story. You don't tell the information. Let the police figure that out. Y'all sound like the man with the goddamn saxophone and y'all voted for no money. I didn't even offer a dime and y'all talking about, man, Tommy killed Chewy Mo. Tommy killed Chewy Mo. What? Come on. We know better than that over here. Go do that on someone else's channel. This is Diamond Story. If we were on DeMarc, I mean, DeFranco story, then okay. But no, y'all. I failed y'all. I have failed y'all. I, I apologize. No, seriously. Seriously, I failed y'all. We giving up too much information. This is Diamond Story. 
Now, if it's DeFranco, I'd expect y'all. I'd expect y'all to mention it, but because we on the police. St- oh. We got to do better. You know what? I'm not singling anybody out. We got to do better as a whole. That's on me. I, hey, you can put the blame on me. Like, I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. Put the blame on me. That's on me. That's on me. I may, Maybe I baited y'all. Maybe I baited y'all. But I know we own Diamond Story, but. We got to start calling out Tommy Egan. We have to start calling out Tommy Egan. Tommy Egan is doing some reckless shit, man. Tommy Egan isn't aware of his surroundings. Now, we don't know at this moment that this lady's a police officer because when she first walked out, I didn't see any badge or anything. I didn't know she was a police officer till later on, but we're not in that story. Tommy don't know who this lady was, so that's why I was emphasizing when Tommy came down the stairs. Hold on real quick. Hit that like button. The chat didn't turn every day to the law. What do we know? Tell the law what? We don't know. Nah, it wasn't a wardrobe malfunction. My my older brother had pulled up. My older brother pulled up. I like, damn, because the porch light was off. Like, I don't have the light on when I'm in here recording and stuff. So I come out the back room. Like, damn, who the fuck is this? Looking out the window trying to notice the car. Like, I don't know nobody with this whip. Hit the lights. Open up the door. Say, who is it, motherfucker? Bow, 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 bow. Woo. Woo. Luckily, I had the gun on safety. Woo. Nah, I just couldn't see who it was. And they used to talk to me, but. Tommy isn't aware of his surroundings, y'all. Tommy's coming down here talking, running his mouth about everything he did. This is where conspiracy comes from. Now, of course, we don't know that she's a police officer at this moment, which is bad on Diamond's part because this is your dog, Diamond. You're supposed to let him know you knocking down a police officer. You're supposed to let your dog know you're knocking down a police officer, especially if your ass is on papers, and especially if we move in that work. I got body, 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 we got to start calling Tommy out, man. I know don't no one else do it. I fuck with Tommy, but Tommy be on that bullshit, man. Tommy is one reckless white boy. You got Vic, and then you got Tommy. Complete opposites. This nigga Tommy just be wilding out. He came down. Yeah, it was in code, but he basically confessed to a murder in front of a goddamn cop. Hey, that chewy thing, I handled it. <laughs> He's like, oh, hey, oh. Like, what? Tommy. Nigga, you supposed to be dead. This is Diamond Story, Tommy. Get out of here. So Diamond ends up knocking her down. <laughs> damn Tommy 
They making me do this, Tommy. They made a hey, they pick y'all, y'all, y'all did that. Y'all said more talk about diamond. And I just realized that Tommy down here running his mouth in front of police. Now he ain't say nothing until she went up the stairs, but you don't know who this is. He's like, hey, you can't come down here. Hey, we got rid of Chewie. Handled that situation. I'm like, hey, nigga, what are you doing, bro? Diamond is thinking just like me. Diamond's like, what? Hey, Tommy, what are you doing, man? This is my story. You trying to fuck it up? Hey, listen. I told you yesterday I had to go see my new PO. He different. You talking about he can be bought off. Dog, this nigga can't be bought off. I'm telling you right now, he ain't going to be bought off. He worse than Bennigan. Hairline just as far back. I don't know what's going on, but that's my new PO, Tommy. And you handling situations. You can't just run around here and handle shit without consulting me. This is a partnership, man. I introduced you to the plug. You didn't introduce me to the plug. I introduced you. Remember that. But Tommy don't care because Tommy does have that privilege. But this ain't his story. So from Diamond's, Diamond's supposed to let him know, hey, that's a police officer that I'm fucking with. Now, Diamond's already fucking up because he's on them papers and he's fucking. I don't know if she's a police officer or a security guard. Nonetheless, he shouldn't be fucking with her when he knows that they doing all of this, especially after Tommy just came down and said that he didn't handle Chewy. You see what I'm saying? You don't. Oh, she's the CEO. That's oh yeah, she was fucking wrong. Diamond. Come on, brother. Please help us out, man. This is your story, man. This is your story, but every time we look up, they they relaying more information to me. I ain't even know nothing about that, but they saying, Mo, you ain't you ain't telling the story like the story is. I, I I thought she was police or something. You know I don't pay attention. All I do is listen, and I just try to look around the scene. I don't be, well, most of the time, I don't even listen to what they say. I just read it, so I don't be paying no attention. I just read it, and that way, if I see it, I can remember it. After he finds out, oh, they got the damn dude for a Bronco. They getting a little bit of money over here. Now, after he finds out that Tommy handled that Chewy situation, he has to go and try to calm it down. Calm it down a little bit. You know, smooth things over. Now, I don't know, Cheryl. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Right now, I'm in a good mood, and I'm just... Just going with the flow, to be honest with you. So I don't even know what's going on right now, to be honest with you. I don't know if that's the same lady. I, I told you, what I do is just look in the background. Man, I didn't give y'all six or seven different I Spy <laughs> trivia questions. I don't really watch these episodes like that. There are certain parts that interest me, so I do watch them. But for the most part, I'm just staring off into the background. Reading the captions. That's how I watch the that's how I watch TV. <laughs> Especially on shows I'm gonna try to break down. But I can't tell y'all if the first lady was a random lady or if the first lady was a CEO or if the second lady is a CEO or a police officer. I couldn't tell you none of that. All I know is she came in the motherfucking barbershop with handcuffs. But we ain't at that part of the story right now because if y'all haven't heard, there's some people in the chat. We're not going to say none of their names, but they gave us information that Chewie is killed. Now, if you didn't know, they in, I didn't know this. I did not know this, and I wouldn't tell y'all this. This is what they saying. This ain't me saying it. This is what they saying. They saying that Tommy killed Chewie, and that's what he meant by he handled that Chewie situation. And Chewie actually flipped from CBI to go work with Jannard. So now Diamond has to go talk to his brother Jannard and let him know we shouldn't be going to war over this. It was a misunderstanding. This is what they said, not me. This is what they said, not me. Kendall, I'll let you know. We'll let you know when we get to that last question. Because I, I want y'all to figure out the last question. Because I remember y'all y'all ran through the first four like it was nothing. Y'all y'all were G's today. They were like, we getting prepared. So I said, okay, we're going to see who is the king of welcoming. And I gave y'all a hint already, but y'all wasn't listening. They don't listen, though. They don't listen, though. Diamond pulls up to the motherfucking spot. Mm -hmm. Got that Ford Bronco out front. 
Mm-hmm. That's the car with the horses. Now, we got Little K. Now, Little K, he has his own story. But we're going to get to that when we get to Jannard's story. But right now, he is upset. He's upset because he heard that somebody over in CBI had did some wild shit. And when I mean wild shit, I mean wild shit. They didn't kill Chewie. They didn't kill Chewie. Now, I don't know who killed Chewie. There's some, if y'all want to know who killed Chewie, there's people in the chat that'll give you up that information. But this is Diamond Story. We don't do no talking. <laughs> we don't do no talking. So they pat him down so he can go and talk to his brother. When he gets back there, Jannard's looking around. What are you doing here, Diamond? He said, nah, it ain't no what am I doing here. You know exactly why I'm here. You got to let that shit slide, bro. You got to let that shit go, man. It was a misunderstanding, man. Tommy did what he had to do with Chewie. He got a little disrespectful, and when you disrespect the set, we get your ass up out of here. We call you Offset. Disrespect the set, they call you Offset. Shout out to Offset. Going to the jeweler bus and AP, yeah. Sliding on the water like a jet ski, yeah. I'm trying to fuck you and your bestie, yeah. Chopper with the clips of Don't Test Me, yeah. Brick Flair drip go, woo, on a bet. Yeah, y'all know. You disrespect the set. You are now offset. Jannard's like, no, man, fuck that shit, man. Tommy did all of that. Diamond's like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not confirming or denying none of that, but what I'm telling you is, what I'm telling you is, y'all can't start a war. Y'all can't start a war right now, especially when you can't win. And the reason he's saying that is because we all know treason. <laughs> hey, don't even make me laugh right now, man. I believe Jannar is going to bounce back, but this ain't his story right now. So we on Diamond. We we we, we CBI. We CBI. And we know that treason ain't going to be shit. These niggas weak as a motherfucker over there. Treason ain't on nothing. Oh, yeah. Two hour mark. We're going to get us another simply. Basically, Diamond is telling him, hey, fall back. Now we looking, and he's getting some money now. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. These look like hundreds. So 30. One, two, three, four. Five, so that's another five. Yeah. yeah, about 75, 80 right here. You got us a little 50 piece, 20 piece here. The bundles, they probably about fives. Yeah, we got about 200, maybe 250 on the table. Yeah, maybe, maybe 250. Might be pushing three. I ain't for sure. I ain't for sure. You know what I'm saying? We don't know how much money they really getting. But the brothers aren't seeing eye to eye and we all know how this is. It gets ugly between the two. Now, I wanted to do something with this because they got the hot tamales over here. That's one of my favorite candies, hot tamale. But they playing chess. And that's exactly what we doing now. Playing chess. Hmm. Let me see what this bishop can do. Okay, the bishop, we can take out a... Wait, what is that? Why? Oh, we can get the rook. If he moves this, where is he going to go to? All he can do is hit the pine. That'll put him. Oh, he ain't getting the king. So we can go ahead and get the rook the hell up out of there. Oh, no. But then his knight will get him. No, nah, that'll be a setup. Stay there. Uh, Yeah, we can make a couple moves. We can go and get. We could go there. Yeah, I ain't that good at chess, man. I'm just looking at some bullshit. I ain't going to lie to you. Y'all probably thought I was looking at something important to you. I'm like, damn, what we'll see. I was going to be a grandmaster, man. But unfortunately, I didn't do a good job. And here I am talking about power. Now, we got OG in here. OG got the box. He got the grayed out box. And that's crazy. If you got the gray hair, hey, man, just get the low cut. There ain't no reason to be trying to keep that box around either. But OG clean as hell, though. He got the box. He ain't got no clients, though. He ain't got no clients, though. 
<laughs> Jacoby said, this is the hint. <laughs> hey, who is the king of welcoming? Hey, if it's a hint, it's a hint. I don't know. I can't, I don't know. Who is the king of welcoming? Because y'all didn't need any hints for the first fold. So, like I said, I gave y'all a hint. Who is the king of welcoming? Welcome. How are you doing? Yeah, who is the king of welcoming? When you see it, you're going to be like, damn. Damn. Mo, you good. You probably gave us those easy ones on purpose. You gave us those easy ones on purpose, Mo, because you knew that wasn't no one going to figure this one out. But, hey, we'll get there. Nah, not the barbershop guy. We're going to continue the story, man. When I see it in the chat. Nah. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Welcome. Hello. How are you doing? Welcome. Who is the king of welcoming? Now, OG, he got the box. Like I said, crazy with the gray hair. <laughs> you know what I mean? Crazy with the gray hair. He ain't never got no customers. But we don't even know when he actually started working here because last season it was just diamond in this motherfucking barbershop and it was dark as hell. Well, guess what? The lights are on. Business is booming. Everybody in here kicking it. You got the little kid over here. Got the Air Maxes on. Nah, them ain't Air Maxes. Them is. Oh, them is Air Maxes. It's a lot of people in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the chair. Nine people and only one barber. Nine people and only one barber. <laughs> Man, ain't no way I'll be in this barbershop. They ain't got no TVs. It ain't no music playing. I was at the barbershop today kicking it. Man, they were playing some R and B today. I don't even really listen to R and B like that, but they had some um some R and B, and they were getting it too. I said, "Damn, this shit, they hey, y'all getting it today?" I might tip. They said, "Oh shit, we got a big tipper in the building, big tipper in the building." Man, I tipped five dollars and got the hell up out of there. I ain't got that kind of money to be tipping like that. But I wouldn't be coming up into Diamond Shop because I'm not going to OG. OG is over here sharpening his razors on the old sharpener. Like, hey man. If you don't change that blade out, bro, we are not using the same blades. I'm not going to OG, and I'm definitely not about to wait for nine niggas to get their hair cut before I get in the chair. Hell no. Hey, man, I'll be back at four. I'll be back at four. <laughs> <laughs> Big Wolf said, why are they sitting so close? Hey, facts. They sitting right next to each other. Now, these two are probably brothers, but he's in a little chair. This might be their dad. So this might be like grandma, dad, son, and son. <laughs> this is probably like a family over here. But Tyrone Reeves shows up. And we're like, who? Yeah, Tyrone Reeves. Mr. Don't Play. Mr. Don't Play is in the building. And when he shows up, everyone gets quiet. <gasps> and if they had a record playing, you hear a record scratch. <laughs> Mr. Don't Play pull up in this spot. And you guessed it. Mr. Ain't playing around. Oh, yeah. Calvin's Barbershop was in Chicago. I just watched Barbershop like two weeks ago. <laughs> hey, oh, oh, uh, what was his name? Anthony Anderson, man. He said... <laughs> Uh, Michael Ely called him from jail and said, "Hey man, man y'all done robbed my uh, y'all done robbed the ATM in my truck, man. My plates is all over the place." He said, "Man, I'm a third time felon, man. They about to give me life." He said, "Ha ha, gotcha, nigga." <laughs> <laughs> and that nigga was mad as hell. Had his ass locked up, man. That's why you don't let nobody borrow your shit. You don't know what motherfucker about to do. But Mr. Don't Play came up here. Mr. Don't Play, he ain't playing around. He said, drop them draws, son. Now, this ain't no pause moment. This is Mr. Reeves talking. Drop them. You owe me one right now. Oh, hey, yo, oh, pause. Wait, what's this nigga talking about the diamond? Some old man came in with a, a plastic cup, and I'm looking, because I, I sweep floors over here. I don't know if y'all know, I sweep floors in between time over at Diamonds. 
I get the hair up off the, you know what I'm saying? Up off the ground. They got this little vacuum over there. When you sweep it over there, it'll just suck the hair right up in there. Man, you ain't got to get a dustpan. You just got to sweep it into one designated location. Sucks it on up there, man. It's crazy how technology came. Back in the day when I was a young sweeper, you know what I mean? I had to get down there with the dustpan and the straw broom and make it happen. But not now, no. Not over at Diamonds, nah. We didn't upgrade it because we get some money. But I look over and I see a, a short guy talking about drop a mister. Fill her up. I said, fill her up. Fill her up. What is he talking about? Fill her up? Y'all hearing this nigga saying fill her up? This is kind of a pause moment. He said, drop them. The only thing I know niggas can drop pause <laughs> is their hands or their draws. Like that's the only thing that can drop. Well, it's clippers, but Man, he's holding up a, a plastic container. What's he doing with that? So he tells Diamond to go in the back. I said, Pauls, you owe me one right now. I said, oh, here we go, man. Here we go, man. Nah, y'all ain't ever sweep the floor at the, uh, the barbershop when y'all were younger? Hell, I started off as a young kid sweeping the floor at the crib. My dad used to fuck our hair cuts up. My dad couldn't cut hair. My dad couldn't cut hair at all. But, man, I tell you, he used to cut our shit. Like me and my brother, when we was young, you would cut our hair. We would have to get down and sweep the floor. So you always wanted to get your hair cut first. You wanted to get your hair cut first because he would cut our hair in either the bathroom or in the kitchen. Now, if you got your hair cut first, you can go hop in the shower and go get in bed. If you got your hair cut second, you got to put the chairs up. We had the milk crate that you sit on and you put a pillow on top of it. You got to put the milk crate back up in the attic. You got to wipe the uh, floor down after you sweep it up. You got to get a wet towel and wipe it up. So you never wanted to get your hair cut first. I mean, second, because you were the one that cleaned up. So my dad used to fuck our hair up back in the day. So that's where I first started sweeping up here. And then... Once we started getting a little bit of money, well, I won't say we got a little bit of money, but I started getting older and got to middle school. Well, what? Yeah, it was like, yeah, before high school, yeah, middle school. I started going to the barbershop, but I didn't have the money for a haircut, so I would just sweep the floors. Because my parents weren't going to pay for the haircut because my dad could cut it for free. So if we were going to get a haircut, I would go up there and sweep the floors for me and my brother to get a haircut. <laughs> And that's how I started sweeping floors at the barbershop. Sweep the floors for a free haircut. Shit, that don't sound like a bad exchange for me. Go up there every two weeks on a Saturday, get to sweeping. Uh, and then I started, that was like the first, like the first month. The first month I went up there three times and got a free haircut. But then I started going up there every weekend and just sweep on a Saturday for like four or five hours. Shit, it gave you like 20 bucks and you get a haircut. Shit. <laughs> Shit, you couldn't tell me nothing with that 20 piece you know what I'm saying I mean like it's great with a dub on your boy what's happening and I got a fresh cut faded up on these motherfuckers I know they was mad hey they were hating when I started getting fades they were hating I used to always get my hair all even cause my dad was cutting this shit but one day your boy showed up with a 20 piece in the pocket they said damn this nigga more getting money now huh he going to a real barber now huh I said, man, fuck y'all, man. Said, I'm getting money over here. I used to get my 20 in ones, nigga. I used to have a bankroll on me. Fuck was y'all talking about? Wasn't walking around with one Andrew Jackson. Who I look like, nigga? I got a 20 piece. I got a whole gang of Washingtons in the pocket. Man, what y'all talk about? Fuck all that. But back to current day, I'm still sweeping floors and this motherfucker John Wicks or uh, the Equalizer, he didn't came in here with a bottle talking about go fill it up right now. I said, damn, he talking bad to diamond it's a damn he talking oh he, he got a badge on y'all this nigga got a badge so once i see that he got a badge on i straighten up and fly right i'm over in the corner i'm sweeping i got a magnifying glass acting like i'm looking on him i ain't know this was the law i thought this was a random nigga that then came up in the building talking bad to diamond i thought we was about to see some gunplay why didn't y'all tell me that this was mr don't play now, I heard rumors in the streets about Mr. Don't Play, but Mr. Don't Play showed up live in the flesh. And let me tell you, this nigga was more scarier than the myth. I thought I didn't see motherfucking Bigfoot. Look, y'all, it's Nessie. No, it's Mr. Don't Play. This nigga that came in here to the job wasn't playing around. This is a day later, y'all. A day later in a dollar short, he told this nigga to go ahead and piss right now. I'm testing this shit right now, Mr. Diamond. 
I said, oh, Lord, this nigga, oh, I don't ever want to go to jail. I don't ever, 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 ever want to go to jail. Mr. Don't Play that came up in here, Tommy talking about, I got something to do. Diamond looked and said, hey, nigga, cut this shit out. This is Mr. Don't Play. Mr. Don't Play even made Tommy sit down like a little boy in the corner. Tommy like, uh, what happened to all that tough talk y'all keep telling me about this Tommy Egan character? They keep telling me, Mo, Tommy, a bad man. Luckily for me, this ain't Tommy's story. This is Diamond's story, and this is me as an employee. He even made Tommy Egan sit down. Diamond said, no, 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 have a seat, have a seat. I said, damn. Now I heard this is between us. Like everything we about to say right now, keep this in between us. All right. I heard that Tommy was a bad motherfucker. Come here, come here. People were telling me. After episode one, they were saying, Mo, I said, what's up? They said, Mo, I said, what's up? They said, no, Mo, listen to me. I said, all right, what's up? What's going on? They said, Mo, I said, what? I don't know if you know or not. I'm like, no, what, man? They said, Tommy need to pay Mr. Don't Play a visit. I said, man, y'all, y'all bullshitting right now. Tommy need to pay Mr. Don't Play a visit. That's what that's what they saying, Mo. That's what they saying. I'm not saying that. This is what they saying. They said Tommy's supposed to pay him a visit. They got to. They got to get rid of him. But when we see Mister Don't Play in the same room as Tommy, he basically made Tommy shut up and sit down. I'm not. Hey, that's all. I'm. I'm just telling y'all what I seen. This is what they said. This is what they said. Tommy sat down. They were telling me last week, they said, Mo, Tommy going to pay Reeves a visit. I said, who? Tommy Egan? I said, shit. I like the man. Shoot. I'm with y'all on that. But the moment was there and nothing happened. Nothing happened. They turned the music off. Tommy sat down. Diamond went on in the back and did what he had to do. I said, what? Ain't no way. Ain't no way. But it's happened. It's true. It's true. I don't. I'm only telling y'all what I saw, and what I know is that Tommy sat down. Well, after the PO leaves later on in the day, Tommy's been ripping and running the streets. He's been into some bullshit. We're gonna talk about that on his story. But he's trying to tell Diamond, "Hey, look, I got an idea. Two ninety at two. Two ninety. What you know about the city of Chicago? What is two ninety, y'all?" What is 290? Now, this is Diamond Story. We can, I'm going to go ahead and give y'all the disclaimer. We can give this information. This is just insider information right now. What is 290? You know what I mean? This ain't the police. What is 290? Is that the interstate? 290 at 2 tomorrow. It's a lot of twos tomorrow. And Diamond is basically saying, look, I can't roll with you on that one, man. I'm going to have to let you know. But I can't roll, man. You see my PO officer. That's Mr. Don't Play. Dog, he popped up today not playing. He could come back tonight if he wanted to. Tommy's like, hey, I'm not trying to hear none of that. We about to turn the city up, and I ain't got a plan. I got a plan. <laughs> After Tommy leaves, I'm looking, I'm like, okay, who is this lady? I couldn't tell if this is U.S. Marshal. I couldn't tell if this is the feds. I couldn't tell who it was. This is top flight security. I didn't know who it was, but all I heard was Diamond that said, hands up, turn around, mister. Now, I told y'all about a story where they didn't pull fire on me before in D.C., I done told y'all a story where I got kicked out of the club in Phoenix, Arizona, because they thought I shot up the club 
a week prior, which was stupid, but that was a whole nother story. Got about that with my work ID. Man, I went through a lot of shit when I worked at that job, especially traveling. But I fit the idea of some food that shot up a club the week before. But luckily, all my shit, it had, you know what I'm saying? I passed the flying cut. Like, nigga, I wasn't even in the city last week. Nigga, what the fuck you talking about? But I seen her coming. I was like, nah, two times in one day. Two times in one day? I said, oh, hell no. Hell no. So I hid in the broom closet. I hid in the broom closet. I got my, I, I, I got I got a little crack right there. It's just like this. So I'm in there and all I hear is diamond. That's it. Hands up, Mr. Turn around. No more talking. I said, oh, shit, nigga, God damn it. I should be a real nigga. I should be a real nigga. Bust about this dough. Get on their ass. Ooh, I should help Diamond out right now. Because if I don't help people out, they're going to be hitting me up talking about, Mo, you a bitch. Mo, you ain't help out, man. You weak, man. You don't want friends like Mo. Who needs enemies when you got friends like Mo? So I'm in the broom closet. And I'm thinking, I'm like, man, should I hop out on them boys? Should I help Diamond out? Should I should I, should, should I help Diamond out? I'm like, I don't know, man. <sighs> All of this sounds like a pause moment. Should I come out the closet, pause, or should I stay in the closet and not help Diamond out? Oh, I stayed in the closet. I didn't help this nigga Diamond out. I wasn't going to jail today, y'all. I was not going to jail. She had motherfucking handcuffs, y'all. I thought this is the real deal, man. I was scared. I ain't going to lie to you. I didn't want to go back, man. I just got out, man. I don't want Mr. Don't Play. Mr. Don't play. That's why I don't want to go, man. I just told y'all I didn't. I ain't want to go. No more locked doors. No more locked doors. Been the wire. Been the wire. I don't want to go. I don't want to go back to jail, y'all. I don't. I don't. I don't. They arrested. They arrested Diamond Tommy. <laughs> they came in here with 10 of them, Tommy. It was 10 police officers. I tried to fight back. I tried to. It was 10 of them. I had two of them. And then they they, they, they had my arms after I knocked two of them out. Tommy, I'm telling you, Tommy, I knocked out two police officers. And then, and then two more. And they got me. They had me. They had me hemmed up. And they were arresting Diamond. I couldn't do nothing. They came and got him. They came. I did all I could, Tommy. They got Diamond. My eye. What? So they went ahead and they arrested this nigga Diamond. I said, damn. <sighs> I can tell y'all one thing. <laughs> Once I came out the closet, pause. <laughs> I didn't finish sweeping the floor, nigga. I went home. I ain't <laughs> I just went to the crib, nigga. Fuck what they talking about. <laughs> y'all thought I was about to stay in here and close up. Hell no. I just turned the lights off. I said shit. After they arrested you, Diamond, they, they arrested me too, but they let me go. So I just closed the door and went home. <laughs> hell no nah. they would have called diamonds ass man ain't no way i still would have been in there sweeping up after they took him up out of there <laughs> but we all know no better so she arrests diamond it's crazy though because she arrests diamond and after she arrests diamond she assumes the position. I've never heard of this before. She arrests Diamond, but she assumes the I mean, position. And then she take a little bit of the... She arrests Diamond, assumes the position, and takes a little sniffy sniffy. I said, what the hell? If I would have known this was going on, I would have came about the closet and said, give us free. You know what I'm saying? Give us free. Give us free. Shit, the fuck? I would have came about that motherfucker like, oh, we going to a party? We going to a party? Sign me up. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> ski wee wee ee wee wee, Mrs. Officer. If I'd have known it was a party, I would have came and helped this nigga Diamond. 
But I ain't know it was a party. I ain't know it was a party. I thought he was getting arrested, y'all. I thought he was getting arrested. Turn out she played with the booger sugar. Now she probably getting her booger sugar from the actual prison. Like, man, now I ain't fucking with that. That smell like booty crack. The real definition of stink butt. She got that original Dahlia. Tommy talking about we good at 2 p.m. Whole time we got a whole junkie in front of us. <laughs> we got a whole junkie in front of us. She came in here, arrested Diamond. I done went home early. Damn. All right. Well, we own at 2 tomorrow, y'all. So, all right. We get our first well of these storylines that we're going through. We get our first two bodies. And that's when they pull up on the Serbs. So they pull up on the service, and we already know what happened. We're going to go more in-depth on Tommy's story just so we can finish up Diamonds because it, it's the same thing. But we get our first two bodies in the storyline that we own, and it's two of them. It's two of them. One, a two, ooh, a three. All right, so we get our first two bodies, two Serbs. And Tommy got one of them. <laughs> Katie on that stuff again. See y'all in the y'all in the back, you know what I mean? Y'all in the back, y'all see your boy be working over here a little bit. Oh, oh, whoa, wait. We said she's gonna be on that stuff by episode three. All right, bet. And then Tommy got one Serb. All right. So as of right now, we got to go back. And I got the footage. So we're going to try to figure out how many actually dropped. So episode one, we got four. We got two today. So we had six total for the season. And Tommy got three. All right, bad. They come through here. Pink, pink. Well, they ain't had no silences on, so they had the little pop, pop. Laid them down. And then they drugged the two bodies and they took them with them. So at first, I thought it was like some splinter cell stuff. Now, remember, this gentleman gets shot in the head. He gets hit right here. We're going to call him Headbo. Headbo get knocked. Bow, right in the noggin. Well, both of them do. Sambo one and two. That's a nice truck, too. But they end up dragging the bodies off. And I'm like, all right, bet. They about to go sliding right here, right now. They just going to hide these bodies so no one will notice it. But it turns out this was just the tip of the iceberg. This was just the tip of the iceberg. Once they leave from there, we got the cartel hit. Now, this is the 290 right here, West 290. I know y'all called it out. What is this, Van Bruin? Van Bruin Street. I mean, they do everything over here. Didn't they just shoot Tommy on the bill? I mean, on the bridge last episode? Wasn't he driving across this bridge over here? Mm hmm. But we got HVAC Chicago riding around the city, and they pull up. No, black truck. What the hell going on here? They realize it's Tommy Egan. Oh, shit, Tommy Egan. Tommy hop out. Book him, 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 book him. He bust a shot. They find in the back. They done found about at least 50 bricks, 50 of that pure cocaine, and we're all wondering what the hell's going on. He's looking like, hey, Diamond, we didn't hit the gold mine. We didn't hit the gold mine. He said, the gold mine. said, yeah, man, yeah, man, look at all this dope back here. He said, damn, there's a lot of dope back there. So out of nowhere. Diamond hops out. Tommy has a. I don't know, man. This this kill was kind of whack to me. Well, not the kill, but the Tommy punch. I ain't gonna lie. The Tommy punch was kind of whack to me. Just gonna be honest with you. The Tommy punch, like he punched him, and he's like, ah. like what 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 are we doing with this? What is this shit? <laughs> but Tommy pulls up. Wow, pop them right in the grill. And then out of nowhere, Diamond 
runs them on over, man. Diamond runs them on over, and we got two more members from the cartel. Tommy didn't kill either one of them. Yeah, Tommy didn't get either one of those. He punched him, and Diamond is the one that killed him. Damn. Tommy don't get no credit for that. Yep, and now they got their bricks, and it is what it is, man. <laughs> it is what it is. All right, man, that's that's Diamond's story, man. That's Diamond's story. Diamond ain't doing that bad. I don't think he doing that bad. What y'all think? Should Diamond continue to work with Tommy? And if he does, is he ever going to get the respect he deserves? Or is Tommy going to be the one that's in charge? You know what I mean? Is he always going to be up under Tommy? Or is Tommy going to give him a chance to shine? You know what I mean? Because he keeps telling Tommy to chill, but Tommy keeps telling him, I'm going to do whatever the hell I want to do. I mean that was cool how they did that. Even getting hit by the truck. I just didn't like. I didn't like the uh, the Tommy punch part. That was kind of. I was like, man, what are we doing here? It's like Batman hitting somebody in the cartoon. Boom! And it's like pile on the screen. Then we look up. The dude's all dizzy and shit. Like, hey, oh no, man. He said, Tommy. Tommy said, yeah. <laughs> 